After my last video on um, basic tips for shot shell reloading, I had several people ask me to give close-up pictures of my crimps so I could explain them more thoroughly. And I started to take pictures and realized it would be a whole lot easier to do a video. And if you know me, I tend to get too far into detail. So if you're nerdy enough to stick along or frustrated enough, pay attention and you'll learn some stuff. Or maybe you're an old hand and this is all news or nothing new to you. In which case, sorry for spending your time. Okay, so let's start with what you want your crimp to look like. And let's get this in frame here. This one, I honestly don't remember whether it was loaded with a Mac press or a Lee press, but it looks just like factory ammo. The crimp is all the way closed in the middle and it's not swirled. They're even, um, you'll notice it isn't like a straight line. Uh, I'll see if I can find one of those later. I had one set aside, but anyway, it has the crimp is level and it's about say somewhere between a sixteenth and a thirty second below this roll um, crimp so a good strong crimp has both a fold crimp and a roll crimp and ideally a slight taper inward at the finishing edge now a lead press either comes capable of giving this crimp without the final taper or it will give you a flat crimp. And if you have the flat crimp, um, check out my other video. There's a solution to give you the adjustment that it doesn't come with. A nice thing about the Lee Press is you can't mess up the adjustments because there aren't any. Um, the downside is um, not all sh holes and loads are equal and you often need the adjustments. So um, my other video gives you a way to fix that and gain the capability that is lacking. Um, I'll put the link uh, on your screen now. So, um, if you look at your factory shells, you'll see most of them are this way. Why is this important? Um, the taper helps it feed nicely. It also makes the roll crimp stronger. Why do you want a strong crimp? Well, a lot of what it takes for your powder to burn properly and consistently is have resistance, compression, um, and that comes from having a strong crimp. The roll crimp locks in your fold crimp and makes it much stronger and more consistent. Um, it also keeps it from popping open if there's compression inside. Um, the taper locks that in even better. Now if you're getting a Lee press that gives you flat crimp, you kind of have inherently weak crimps that aren't as consistent, so you won't get as consistent burns. So let's look at a few of those. These were made on a Lee press before I did the mod. I thought I'd used up all of these, but fortunately I found some. So um, if you look um, we've got three of them here. Hopefully this is in focus well. It's hard to see. Um, the middle one is open in the middle. The, sec or the one on the left here um, is very slightly open but not big enough for the pellet. And the one on the right is uh, again very slightly open but I wouldn't be worried about that. If you look at all of them you can kind of see a wear band right here and that should have been this very top rim. What that means is a couple things. Um, the wad column should have been set a 32nd to a 16th lower. Again, if you look at my video on modding the Lee Press, that'll give you a way to control that more precisely. Um, and your pre crimp should have been a little bit more closed. And finally, your final crimp needs to go lower to push that down. Um, all of that is solvable. Sometimes, if you have shells like this, you can go put them through a properly adjusted final crimp and fix it. And sometimes that will get you a buckled hull. Uh, we'll get to that part later. Um, so here's three different examples of the Lee flat crimp or improperly dialed in Mac or Hornady or whatever else you've got. So if you've got those, that's the fix you need to do. You need to get more pre-crimp, set your wad very slightly lower, and um, and then your final crimp lower. So start with moving the wad down, run a shell through, see if that fixes it. Uh, and then the pre-crimp and then the final crimp in that order. That's your diagnostic order to get it right. Sometimes you, you can get it away with fixing one or two and sometimes you'll have to do all three. Um, so keep that order in mind as we go through this whole thing. Um, if you start changing stuff all over the place you're going to get frustrated. Always be systematic. So when I talk about setting the wad lower, here is a wad. So if it's here and you start that pre-crimp it won't close very well and you're going to get that problem. So moving it down just slightly will remove that resistance and allow it to close. Um, okay, 
Here is incidentally what a factory roll crimp alone looks like on a factory slug. Um, so this is a strong, very consistent crimp, and we're basically adding this crimp on top of a fold crimp when we're making the nice crimp. Um, okay, now let's get to what I would call a dished out crimp. So this one had a very slight roll. Let's see, make sure it's in frame, and you can see it's popped up. Now it may be when you load it, it's level, and you come back a day or a week or a month later, and they're all popped up. Um, I have a box of them that were all level when I loaded it, and I thought I'd shot up everything like this, but uh, we're in luck. I still have some ugly shells left. So if you look at this first one, it's very slightly dished up. It'll be safe and it'll function. Kind of has a wavy crenellated edge like a castle that's a little higher on one side than another. That's a very classic Lee problem and is mostly solved with more pre-crimp. Tends to be more common on stiff, brittle plastic like these um, federal um, bulk pack type holes here. Incidentally, I don't really recommend using those. They have a paper base wad. Uh, here's another one. Um, you can see the hole in the middle opened up a little bit. It's also sort of wavy. Um, this one stayed pretty good, but again, wavy edge. And this one popped way out. They're all loaded exactly the same. Um, why? Because it doesn't have that strong roll crimp. Now, I load the same load, giving that full roll crimp, and they stay together just fine. So, that roll crimp really locks stuff in and holds it solid. Um, Okay, let's go to the next problem. These are ugly and hard to look at, um, but here we've got three different brands of holes showing three different forms of what I would call a munched hole. Almost all of this um, comes from not having enough pre-crimp, a common problem with the re lead press before my mod. Um, you want to basically be able to stick the shaft of a 3 16 drill bit and just fit it into the, the hole in the middle of the crimp after it's gone through your pre-crimp stage. Um, uh, I think some of the sources suggest um, that you want a quarter inch. I've typically found three sixteenths is what works about right. And you want the edge of, in the top edge of your pedals and payload to be about five sixteenths below the top edge of your empty hole. So, and what I mean by that is this point right here is 5 sixteenths below this point right here. Um, again, all right, sorry for the jump cut there. Um, it turns out I didn't leave enough room in my memory card, so if I repeat myself, I apologize. Okay, so we had just dealt with various types of munch shells, and we're gonna talk about buckled shells. Um, now, um, so this is a particularly egregious buckled shell that actually happened to me pretty recently because the um, crimp die on my mech press came loose and it took me a couple of shells to figure out which lock-in component uh, had to be reset. Anyway, this is uh, way overkill, um, but it demonstrates what I'm talking about. Hopefully that's in frame there. Okay, so a common thing you will see, particularly with the Winchester AAHS holes, let's see if I can find one, I know I have one set out that has it. Um, okay, this one has bad buckling right there and a munched end. Um, where's my other sample? I know I had one. Well, frequently what you'll get with AAHS holes, oh here we go, this one right here. If you can see right there I'll move this in and out, so hopefully at some point it will be in focus. I can't really tell from the angle I'm standing. There, you'll get a ring where the two components that they press together are. Um, when that happens, I take a red marker, like this one, and do that. And that way, or any kind of munch or anything that would cause me to reject a hole later, it saves a step in sorting and then I won't accidentally use bad holes. Um, and if I didn't say it when I was talking about munched, another problem that's very common to pre-crimp is splits in between the pedals. That's almost always attributable to either worn out holes or pre-crimp. So talking about the munched holes here, or I mean the buckled holes, um, most of the time the buckled hole happens from um, the payload not supporting the crimp. So typically if you're getting buckled holes you just need to move your payload up 
often a small amount, say a 32nd of an inch to a 16th. Um, a, a common thing is it's not just the hole that's buckling though, it's your wad. So if you look at these two wads, um, with the AA um, type wads and several others, the AA wads have a knee. And so basically this wad can be compressed, I don't know the exact amount, but somewhere a little over a sixteenth of an inch before these knees buckle. And so you'll get a consistent crimp anywhere above the buckle point or anywhere well below the buckle point. But if you're right at that buckle point, you'll have one crimp collapsing and possibly the whole buckling and the next crimp um, popping out and the crimp after that um, will be just right and you'll be wondering what the heck is going on it means you either need to change your load or uh, get fully above the buckle point or fully below and it doesn't have to be by a lot just enough that they're all on one side of that threshold again inconsistency and problems in engineering are almost always near a threshold point. Thresholds are the worst, so get above or below the threshold. Um, typically when you'll experience the buckling will be while you're applying the crimp. That means the stage immediately after the pre-crimp, not necessarily the final taper that gives you the taper roll. I'm talking about the piece where it actually pushes your pre-crimp down level. That's usually where you'll see the buckle occur. Um, and most of the time when you get a buckle, it's again because your payload is too high. And sometimes it will be because you don't have enough pre-crimp, but I'd say nine times out of ten, you got too much payload and it's not too high. Um, if you look at, say, RCBS's current version of their manual and several other sources, they'll tell you that it's perfectly fine to compress any modern wad. Old holes using fiber wads or black powder the amount of compression matters a lot. New holes, it, it almost doesn't matter at all, although you can lose some of the cushion benefit that's designed into the wads if you, say, collapse an AA type hole. Um, that's one reason I prefer more rigid designs like the federal spiral springy thing or Remington's um, figure eight or tube is that they don't have a specific point where they quit working right. Um, Nothing wrong with the AA holes or, um, I mean, the AA wads or similar designs by clay busters, etc., so long as you're not over compressing them. Um, so, moving on to the last style of crimp problem is what I would call a collapsed crimp. Here is a couple ridiculous ones. So, this is an example of a um, AA wad that collapsed when I accidentally stuck something in there and compressed it twice um, before I felt something was wrong and realized that I was sticking in a second wad and that's the, and what you'll get with a collapsed crimp because the, again the payload wasn't supporting it um, but this is a ridiculously exaggerated collapsed crimp um, this one is a one I made to replicate what you'll often get with Lee from not pushing your payload down enough and not having enough pre-crimp, you'll get this style of collapse crimp. So you'll notice the wear line that should be the top of the, the roll rim is right where my knife point is. And the um, crimp itself is concave. Um, now, there's always degrees to it and a certain amount isn't necessarily harmful, but again, you're going for consistency and level is what you want. And in the same recipe, by getting your payload down say a 32nd of an inch lower, maybe a 16th, a little more pre-crimp and pushing your final crimp down probably actually the same amount will get you a perfect hull. So you don't need to change components or recipes, you just need to fix your compression and you'll have good looking shells. They'll also be stronger and more consistent. Um, Having consistent compression gives you consistent velocity. If you're loading slugs, that means a consistent point of impact. Um, one thing I should talk about for the really ugly openings, like that one, or where's that munchy guy? This one here, or the standard Lee flat crimp that you often get from the Lee loader, is um, 
since the powders used in shotguns really needs compression initially to start burning well, you run some risk of danger of a squib load if you are having really weak crimps using really worn out shells and the flat crimp is more prone to that. So that's another reason to um, get your crimps right. But really once you've got it figured out there's no extra time. You just figure your marks, your settings, get it dialed in and crank out a batch. Like here's a whole batch that I made a few days ago with slugs um, compressed and compressing a AASL wad as shown here and they all look good um, they all look the same um, once I'd solved that problem of the the final crimp die having worked loose or I mean not the final the, the primary crimp die having worked loose they all look pretty and I you know no nothing slowing me down just crank them out one after the other keep the same hands doing the same thing stand there, you can even watch TV, although I don't really recommend that, and you'll get good ammo. So hopefully this helps you guys. Um, let me know if you have questions or comments, and um, subscribe if you want to see more inane rambling about reloading and technical matters.